Every quarter, the Flutter team launches a survey to developers to find out what their perception of the framework is, how satisfied they are, what problems they see, and what they will improve. In short, they want to get direct feedback in order to improve Flutter. In this video, I bring you a quick summary of the results of the survey made by the Flutter team in the third quarter of this year, 2022. This video is just trying to be a quick summary. If you want to know more details, I leave the link to the article in the video description. One of the first questions in the survey is to find out the degree of general satisfaction of developers with the framework. In this graph, we can see the blue line that represents those who have responded very satisfied and somewhat satisfied, while the red line represents only those who are completely satisfied. As the article points out, 93% of the survey developers are more or less satisfied with Flutter, while 55% are very satisfied. We can also see a slight decrease in those who are completely satisfied from the score of 60 in the first quarter of this year. In the following figure, we can see the distribution of those who have responded very satisfied and somewhat satisfied in each of their respective fields. The first positions are occupied by the core framework, Android and material widgets. These components have had a lot of care and attention from the beginning. On the other hand, development and desktop platforms occupies the last position. We can also see that the web development part is in the last position. It's not surprising in my opinion, since Flutter provides a very specific and limited use case for building web applications, and it's possible that many people approach Flutter with the intention of being able to compete with other JavaScript frameworks and are disappointed to see that the performance level is not the same. Now we're going to see what the respondents have answered about the problems for those who have used and implemented Firebase tools in Flutter. We can see that the predominant complaint is the lack of real-world examples, especially with the Firebase Messaging and Firebase Dynamic Links plugins, to which the article notes that the Flutter team has already taken action and added several sample apps to the Firebase documentation. The second most criticized point is the design of the API. Let's hope then that the way of interacting with these tools in the future will be further simplified and we will achieve greater satisfaction in this area. The third red point is about the quality of the documentation. The article also indicates the intention to improve in this area to offer a higher quality documentation of the Firebase tools for Flutter. After that, the article comments on the findings on the quick fixes and refactoring functionalities in the Flutter plugins of the development IDEs. I understand that it refers to the Android Studio and Visual Studio Code plugins. It seems that 53.1% of the respondents think that these systems work well, while 34.6% think that more functionality should be added. The article narrates how the Flutter team carried out an investigation to discover which are those functionalities that should be implemented. And the result is what you see on the screen, having first of all help in the form of quick fixes about compilation errors, warnings and lints. In second position, we have the power to extract and move widgets, specifically the ability to do it to a new file. From there, we can see other criteria such as restructuring libraries, classes and methods, as well as to import libraries. The last point this article talks about is about what is the approach of developers when it comes to developing on multiple platforms. As shown in this graph, 91.7% of respondents have developed for Android, 61.3% for iOS, and 35.5% for the web. From here we find the development on desktop platforms, still very minor in the Flutter ecosystem, something that is not very surprising given that desktop platforms have been the last to join the list of stable targets for developing software with Flutter. The article then discusses how the Flutter team wanted to know how many developers were on a team that had different people for different platforms. The combined result of the data indicates that 91% of the teams working with Flutter are developing cross-platform, and at least 72% have developed apps for Android and iOS. Some days after this article was published, 
Another specific one was published in which the findings made by the team were discussed extensively when analyzing their responses on the development of desktop applications on Windows, macOS and Linux. But I'll leave that for another time to avoid making this video too long. Thank you very much for watching this video. You have the relevant links to the sources mentioned in this video in the description. I hope you have a nice rest of your day. Goodbye.